Hello, welcome to episode 55 of the Epic Film Challenge 2001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, A Gear Wrath of God from the early 70s, 73 I think, either way you'll see it below me. Um, a Werner Herzog film, the first Werner Herzog film I'd seen, and this is the, the replacement episode 55. Previously it was The Great Dictator, until I realised The Great Dictator wasn't in the book A Thousand One Movies You Must See Before You Die, nor has it never been in the book, and that is covered in episode 1 of the Epic Film Challenge 2.5. So you can go check that one out. So this is kind of uh, filling the shoes, um, kind of, um, you know, uh, filling in the gap that was left by The Great Dictator. Perhaps not a good comparison between the two films at all. They're completely, radically different films. Uh, but pushing that to one side. A Gear Wrath of God um, was an incredible experience uh, to watch and to to see it unfold in front of me. Again, the first Werner Herzog film I'd seen. I know he's made so many films and is respected and revered amongst most film fans, filmmakers alike. Uh, and this is one of his famed uh, collaborations with the actor Klaus Kinski. Klaus Kinski is a German actor, very um, interesting character, kind of, uh, from what I've read, a volatile person and uh, maybe a bit nuts and there's a lot you can look into with him that is quite disturbing as well. Um, but as for his, his his role in Aguirre, Wrath of God, he is the character Aguirre and it's set in I think the 1500s uh, and it is shot on location in Peru in the rainforest and that is one of the main selling points of the film I think that really makes it stand out is how you have this story set in this jungle and it is filmed in the jungle and throughout the film I just was marveling at how Herzog even got this film made from you know I mean a lot of the film takes place on a raft going through the you know, the river of the rainforest in Peru and it's just it's impressive and unthinkable of how he even put this film together when apparently the crew was less than 10 people if you take the cast away um, and I mean the film opens with an incredible shot um, kind of panning down this mountain and you see kind of the sheer drop on the side and just fog It looks like you're in the in the heavens basically and there's all these big like a hundred people slowly making their way across this treacherous like muddy slippy path and um, It just gives you this huge scope and feel of the, the rainforest itself and the jungle and These these people that you see are on this mission I believe they're supposed to be Spanish conquistadors who are trying to find the lost city of gold El Dorado um, and they're kind of led by different people and the film is kind of about the power struggle that goes on and how Aguirre, played by um, Klaus Kinski, is trying to kind of, he's trying to commandeer the group, he's trying to kind of get in people's ears, kind of stab some people in the back maybe and kind of push forward his very aggressive um, opinions of what they should do, where they should go, who should do what and who should, you know, I mean he very much wants to take over so it's about his takeover in a way, and you have people there, you have a monk who's kind of narrating the story as it goes along, you have different characters, a couple of women who are kind of carried around in these uh, kind of, um, I don't know what you call them, when you, you get like a, a kind of a box and people carry the box and the person of importance is inside the box and dressed in nice clothes and not clothes that you would see someone in a jungle uh, in. Uh, but for the most part, there's, you know, natives and, and, and things like that who... Uh, kind of helping them along the way and I've obviously been hired uh, and all that kind of stuff and the interesting thing with this film that I found quite hard to get on with was the language. Um, I got the Blu-ray, um, put it in and it said do you want to watch the film in the English version or the German version? I knew that Werner Herzog was German so I went well I want to go with the original version obviously. Then I looked it up and apparently the original version is in English. Uh, Werner Herzog shot the film in English, the actors spoke English so that he could distribute it to a wider audience as far as I believe and then later on uh, he wasn't satisfied with it so he did a German dub of the film but Klaus Kinski didn't come back to do the German dub for his character in the film because he wanted too much money and so we have someone else doing the voice um, but Herzog says that the German version is his preferred version so that's the one I went with. Now when I watch subtitled films I look at the, the text on the bottom of the screen I read it very quickly. A sentence comes up I read it in about half a second and then I look at the screen and focus on what I'm seeing, the visuals, uh, and then every time the subtitles change I'll scan back down and then come back to the screen. Very natural thing, I've, I've picked it up over years of, of watching subtitled films, it's very natural to me, I don't even think about it anymore um, because I do read all the subtitles and I don't seem to miss any of the visuals because it, I'm so quick at doing it, I kind of read it and look up. In this film, you have people who are speaking English 
Uh, they're supposed to be Spanish, by the way, but they're, they're speaking English. The, the, the voiceover is dubbed in German. I'm reading the English on the bottom of the screen, and every time I look up, I'm seeing them speak in English, even though I'm hearing the German. It was very disorienting. I didn't like it. Um, it was hard to kind of uh, focus sometimes. I'd get thrown off, and then I'd started trying to not look at the characters' mouths, and then that kind of distracted me from what you're supposed to be looking at, the characters, the human element of this film. That's what you know. What drives it, I think, is, is seeing this, this, this kind of... Uh, uh, very um, desolate kind of rainforest. This this place where you know people like me and you don't go, uh, and but p putting people inside of it and, and making that situation feel so real and authentic and gritty. It felt kind of documentary like at times because it just seemed to capture these moments, you know, with with animals and things like that. There was a bit of a horse I didn't like. Where they threw a horse off the, the raft into the river. Uh, it did get back up onto the bank though, and there's a, an incredible shot where the the horse is just looking at them from the bank, and, and then the raft slowly you know drifts downstream, and the bushes slowly obscure the horse. But you just see him just just there, just looking, and then they tell a story afterwards about how you know hey if a, if a horse looks you like that you know, um, so it worked really well into the film. I just didn't like the fact they had to. You know, the, the horse is falling all over the place and I hate stuff like that. It is what it is. Um, there's an incredible scene towards the end with some monkeys that just was... I just, I'd just i never seen anything like it before. And that's kind of what the film does. It shows you these things that uh, aren't normally captured in, in mainstream films, maybe. I don't know. It felt very unique in that way. I mean, I've seen films that have been shot on location before. I've seen films that have kind of uh, gone to these amazing locations to kind of make it feel authentic. But this felt almost as authentic as anything I can say that I've seen uh, in terms of uh, going out into an exotic location and making a film there. Um, and I have to say that the the thing that impressed me the most about the film was just the technical aspect of it, getting the film made out there, you know, and uh, there's lots, I'm sure, about the, the production of the film. There's a commentary on the Blu-ray by Herzog himself. I'd love to listen to it. I just haven't got the time to go into all that stuff. I want to see the English version as well, but I don't feel like the English version is going to be a big revelatory moment for me. I definitely want to watch it the next time I see it. But uh, for me, what drives the film is Aguirre himself, is the actor Klaus Kinski and his very powerful performance. Um, it might not appear powerful and in your face and kind of rah like that, but just he has such a commanding presence. Uh, his piercing blue eyes and the way that he, he stands a very physical performance. He uses his body, you know, I almost didn't even need to hear this other German voice actor kind of speak his words. I almost didn't need, even need to hear him speak words because he carried it with his his body language, which was incredible. Uh, the way he stands is kind of like lopsided and you could almost parody it, you know, make fun of it and spoof it, but he literally is, you know, he's just very, it's just, I can't even do it justice, it's this weird kind of like lopsided gait that he's got when he walks and moves and stands, um, but it's not over the top, it, it's not like, he doesn't look like a caricature when he's doing it, it seems to be oddly, I don't know, uh, threatening, or uh, what's the word, it kind of projects a sense of power that he has, or that he feels he should have over the people. Uh, and again, there's lots of kind of backstabbing going on, and you know, lives lost along the way, and who who did it, and all that kind of stuff. A uh, couple of moments I didn't like, uh, where they kind of uh, the film is very kind of raw and gritty and serious, uh, and there's a couple of moments there of kind of really dark humour, uh, which is fine, but it didn't seem to fit in with the rest of the film, uh, and it's to do with a couple of injuries that happened in the film, so if you've seen it, you probably know the scene I'm talking about. Uh, it was shot well, but like, yeah, a bit over the top, it didn't fit the rest of the film for me. Uh, I mean, the ending shot is kind of hypnotising in a way, and just like, and the music, the music is, is haunting in its own way, and really adds a lot to the film. Uh, I mean, yeah, just, I mean, the, the audio itself, you know, I mean, you hear the music is, you know, it really fits the film and carries the mood along, but there are bits where, you know, this this side character has got this kind of pan flute and he, he plays it every now and again, you know, a gear will come up to him and say, you know, you know, play some stuff for the, for the people because it's like an awkward moment to play some music. And he starts playing this really awful pan flute tune and it's just so bad, but it's kind of catchy at the same time. And then there's this other guy who, who's always going... La 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 la, and it's it's annoying, but kind of almost captivating again at the same time. Where it's just like you're almost like you're in a trance listening to it. These yeah, just like weird little things like that would would come in every now and again. But overall, this is very much Klaus Kinski's film. 
um, and you know again you can you can look into his real life and kind of hold stuff against him um, rightfully so I would say um, but you know I don't like to get into stuff like that really because there's just there's so many so many kind of topics and, and debates that you can get into, into with things like that um, but if you just judge his performance it definitely is something that is compelling and to me you know maybe it was more reality than it was fiction when you're looking into the eyes of Agia in the film Agia Wrath of God it really does feel like you're looking into the eyes of madness a little bit um, and that is definitely something that is a, 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 a major theme of the film I feel it is kind of the madness and um, the uh, unending drive that this character has to reach this lost city of gold El Dorado um, and the people that he will trample over to get there um, even if you know trampling over them might you know perhaps um, ruin his own chances of getting there to begin with it's it's a journey and it feels very realistic because it feels like they're they're just kind of in the middle of nowhere and they're fucked a lot of the time you know they're running out of food and they don't know where to go things like that and you feel the stress I think of it or you feel the um, the concern maybe of the of the, of the group of you know are we gonna get out of this you know are we gonna be able to get home you know what you know this guy's this guy's driving us and, and and showing us which way to go but does he even know the way to go himself and all that kind of stuff so I think it's a great film and um, it's not you know I definitely want to watch it again you know maybe I'll enjoy it even more but um I don't think it's fantastic. I do think it's great because it's it's very much unlike anything I've seen before. <laughs> Take a shot. Um, but is it a film you must see before you die? That's the big question. I'm going to say yes. Um, my my knee jerk reaction is to say no. You know, I, I feel like I don't feel like after I'd watched it, I was like, wow, I'm so glad I finally saw that. But I did feel like, wow, that was that was something else. You know, uh, that was very, you know, f very unique, very of its own <laughs> self. You know. Uh, and I'm very intrigued to see more of Werner Herzog's films, um, particularly the ones he did with Klaus Kinski, because, um, you know, as much of a nutter as he seemed seemed to be, um, I can't deny that his on-screen presence was something to be reckoned with. So I'm intrigued to see where else that goes. But um, let me know your thoughts down below about the film, if you think it's a film you should see before you die, and if you've seen any of other Werner Herzog's films, uh, if you'd recommend any to me, because, again, this is the only one I've seen. I have to say... That Werner Herzog is, is something of a personal hero of mine because uh, I saw this clip where the UK film critic Mark Commode was interviewing him in America, just out in the street, and someone shot Werner Herzog with a with an air rifle in the in the stomach. So they they oh it's just been shot. So they, they take him back to this this room. They go inside and he pulls down his his boxes a little bit, peels his shirt up, and his, he's got a little wound that's bleeding. And Mark was I can't believe you just been sh that's a wound. And Werner Herzog's reaction to getting shot in the stomach was, <laughs> it's not significant. <laughs> I mean, you are living the dream if you get shot and you get to tell someone, it's not significant, you know. That's just <laughs> what a man, what a legend, what a filmmaker. Um, I, I, I loved the way that this was, was put together and the way it looked. And again, it just had that unique feel to it that I, I have never seen in a film before. So, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.